schools don't teach about every battle, and there are some truly gruesome ones totaling more than a million deaths that most people have never even heard of. Conflicts started for many reasons, but the most common reason for battle was conquering land. Most battles on our list were hand-to-hand -hand combat, and that makes the numbers of deaths even more astonishing. War leaves death, but those battles from ancient days through modern times stick out as the goriest of all time, even when compared to modern standards. Soldiers were stabbed, shot, or buried alive in these battles, as there was no common standards for war. French Emperor Napoleon was involved of two of those historically bloody battles. The worst was the Battle of Borodino on September 7, 1812. Yes, that war. The Battle of Borodino has been noted to suffer the most casualties of any single day of the Napoleonic War, with at least 68,000 killed or wounded out of the 250,000 fighting men on the field. The battle was a result of Napoleon invading Russia in June of that year. <laughs> Smart move, huh? Russia suffered the biggest numbers of casualties in the battle, with 44,000 dead, wounded, or missing. That included 1,000 prisoners and 22 generals. The French also sustained death and injury, with 28,000 either dead or wounded, including those in La Grande Armée and those who died in battle. 49 French generals were killed, making it an incredible loss for Napoleon's army. The Russians couldn't gain ground against the French emperor's forces. Napoleon stayed with his army while Russian forces retreated. Napoleon, in true emperor fashion, claimed victory, but it wasn't a decisive one. The French couldn't obliterate the Russian army, and the Russians ended up moving into territory hostile to the French. Napoleon and his remaining troops decided not to follow. As if Napoleon didn't learn his lesson in facing the Russians in 1812, he tangled with them again in October of 1813, in the Battle of Leipzig. This was the largest European battle before World War II, and involved coalition armies of Prussia, Sweden, Russia, and Austria versus Napoleon and his army, which contained German, Polish, and Italian troops, as well as the French, in Leipzig's Saxony. The battle was also called the Battle of Nations, as it was close to being a world war, with a total number of 560,000 fighting soldiers. Total casualties were 133,000 and left Napoleon firmly defeated. He returned to France, while the coalition gained momentum. The Sixth Coalition invaded France in 1814, and Napoleon was forced out of power and exiled to Elba. No more expensive French pastries for him. When you speak of the loss of human life, you have to look at Asia to get an idea of how gruesome war can be. The Battle of Wuhan pitted one million Chinese soldiers from the National Revolutionary Army against 350,000 soldiers from the Central China Area Army, a part of the Imperial Japanese Army in July of 1937. The total dead from the battle has been estimated at 1.2 million people. Japan was set to invade and take Wuhan, but the Chinese were determined to thwart the effort, as the city was both a military and economic center for China. They delayed the Japanese by opening dikes along the Yellow River, which worked, but it also killed 500,000 civilians living in the area as well. The Japanese suffered so much loss, the Imperial Army decided to shift to the north, which created a stalemate in a war that lasted until the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor. China wasn't always one country. It had warring states for centuries, and the Battle of Chongping is one of the battles fought between the state of Chen and the state of Zhao between 262 and 260 BC. The war started when Chen invaded the state of Han in 265 BC. That was a strategic move as it opened main roads and fortresses. In a desperate move to save Shangdang, the governing commander, Fang Ting, gave King Zhao command of the region. An army was sent out to meet Chen forces. They came face to face in 262 BC at Changpeng. The Zhao military leader, Lin Po, decided to wait the Chen army out rather than fight, which proved fatal as it resulted in a three-year stalemate. After several leadership changes on both sides, the Zhao army found itself split in two with its supply lines cut. Zhao soldiers couldn't return to the Zhao fortress and couldn't attack they ended up surrendering. Chen's leadership executed most of the prisoners, reportedly by burying them alive. 
they did release 240 of the youngest soldiers to spread the word that the state of Chin was officially a badass. There were 650,000 dead in combined losses from the two Chinese factions when the battle ended. By the way, it was Chin that did eventually unite China into one country. Way to go, Chin! The Battle of Mukden in February of 1905 was the largest land battle before World War II and the last major battle of the Russo and Japanese War. This war happened in what is now called the city of Xinyang in China. Back then, it was called Mukden in Manchuria. The battle was over land that was under Russia's control. By the end of it, there were 164,000 of the 610,000 fighting troops dead. Russia was forced into a retreat and left the land to the Japanese. It remained under Asian control ever since. War was a common occurrence in ancient times, and battles around the Mediterranean were among the bloodiest. In the Battle of Plataea, the Spartans and Athenians of Greece were seeking to fend off an invasion from Persia, which is now modern-day Iran. This was the second time Persia tried to invade Greece, as the first time was unsuccessful. This time would also prove to be a failure, as the Persians lost again to the much smaller Greek army. Some say up to a million Persians were left dead in the battle. However, scholars say the number of Persian deaths is somewhat unreliable. Scholars put the total death count for both sides of the battle between 50,000 and 90,000. The Battle of Magnesia was another mismatched battle as Roman soldiers fought the Seleucids. The final number for that battle were 5,000 Romans dead and 10,000 Seleucids dead. Yet the Romans won, and the Treaty of Apamea ended the Seleucids' reign in Asia Minor. Most people have never heard of the country of Georgia, but this former Soviet Union territory lies south of Russia. It is also the setting for the Battle of Dagori, where the Kingdom of Georgia fought the Great Seljuki Empire in August 1121. The war started over, believe it or not, taxes. Back then, kingdoms called it tribute, and the Great Seljuki Empire forced Georgia to pay tribute. King David of Georgia decided he didn't like the idea, so he abruptly ended the practice. The Great Seljuki Empire didn't like that, so it sent a large Muslim army to invade and try to squash any resistance. In this battle, 55,000 Georgian soldiers were fighting between 200,000 and 600,000 well-trained soldiers of the Seljuki Empire. It seemed like insurmountable odds, but Georgia won with Seljuki soldiers retreating and the Georgia cavalry chasing them down. There's a festival every year to celebrate this momentous event. However, there wasn't much to celebrate as far as losses goes, and there was an estimated total of 400,000 deaths, although this number is somewhat reliable. At least they have a festival. There have been many battles between the Germans and the Russians over the centuries, but two of the bloodiest happened in the 20th century. The Battle of Kursk during World War II was the final German offensive of that war, and this battle left 250,000 total casualties. The year was 1943, and Nazi forces met Soviet Union forces in Kursk, which was in the southwestern portion of the USSR. For those of you under 40, that's what existed after Russia became a communist nation. The Germans started the offensive in July, but the Soviets launched their operation against the back end of the Germans. They also attacked from the south and hammered the Nazis through the first part of August. Pretty good for last-minute plans, huh? Well, it wasn't last-minute for the Soviets, because the British told the Soviets months before of the Germans' plans. The Red Army established a reserve force and counter-offensives. It even constructed defensive belts, while the Germans waited on more recruits and weapons before invading. Soviet losses are an estimated 177,877 men, but no one knows how many German soldiers died in the battle. Unit records were seized and either remain unavailable to the United States National Archives or were taken to the Soviet Union, which always denied possessing them. Big surprise there. This was the last offensive the Germans tried on the Eastern Front. Allied forces invaded Sicily, and that spelled the beginning of the end for the Nazis. Ah, but the Battle of Kursk wouldn't be the last one between the Soviets and the Germans. The two met again at the Battle of Narva. This time, the Russians started the offensive because Joseph Stalin wanted to take over Estonia. They were met by Estonians and many foreign volunteers joining German forces in the 1944 fight. 
Okay, the German conscription call was illegal, but it was war, and underground Estonian groups hoped the country could become independent, so they figured it was for a good cause. Stalin was stalled, and the Soviet war in the Baltic Sea was restricted for more than seven months. The best estimates are that the Germans lost approximately 14,000 soldiers to death and 54,000 to wounds or sickness. The Soviets never released the battle numbers, so we have no idea of their losses. So secretive, those Soviets.